Hello everyone and welcome to another UFC review. This is for UFC Fight Night, McDonald vs. Lenico. We're in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And uh, we're just going to get right into this one. Uh, but quickly, I do want to apologize for not posting yesterday. I had a uh, late lunch and it was just kind of a weird day in terms of timing, so I really couldn't get much free time to record. However, I do have some now, so I'm going to use it. So we're going to get right into this. So first fight, uh, I didn't... A little factoid, I did not... Uh, I kind of recorded it a bit late. I managed to catch the last two rounds of the first fight in the prelim card, though, so I saw maybe like 97% of the entire... of, of what I normally record. But, uh, yeah, first fight, you know, Scott Holtzman against Cody Fester. Holtzman won by decision. Uh, unanimous, I think it was. And it was a pretty good fight, uh, from what I remember. I mean, in the first round, during a break uh, from the clinch, Fister did land a good elbow... From, from his right side, actually, I think it was, uh, downed Holtzman, and he nearly went for a finish. Holtzman managed to follow up with some good strikes of his own second round. Took to his wrestling legs with a fucking brilliant head kick. It was really good. And third round was mostly wrestling. It was mostly Holtzman's fights from what I saw anyway of those last two rounds. So, yeah, definitely a deserved victory for him. So, uh, it was good. Sorry about that. Uh, hang on. As I go use the toilet, my stomach is feeling a bit weird because, well, I've got a, you know, I just ate steak bakes and chips, kind of. I say kind of because the steak bakes were started a bit late and I had my chips first, then I had my steak bakes, and now I've got a big box of jelly beans, which I've, which I've eaten some of. So, anyway, we're going to move on to the next fight on the freeling card. Uh, Courtney Casey against Christina Sanchu. Casey won by uh, first round TKO. And one thing I do want to quickly bring up is... Something I didn't bring up in UFC 200 because I thought it was going to be a one-off thing. Um, you know how, like, some fighters, well, with the Reebok um, attires now, when, uh, depending on the country they're from, like, their names and the line over the names on their shorts and uh, stuff will be, like, you know, representative of the colours of their country. And one thing I liked that they did at UFC 200 was they had the shorts actually look like the colours. Like, you know, Jose Aldo being Brazilian had yellow ones and his name was in green and blue and stuff. Uh, you know, Sage Northcote being American had blue ones. They kept this trend on for this event, and I'm glad that they did. I'm hoping that they insert it as a patch, maybe, in the UFC game. Fingers crossed. But anyway, yes, Christina uh, Sanchu lost by very quick first round TKO. It happened like halfway through the first round. Um, Courtney just managed to get a really good takedown as they were clinching, just tossed it down and managed to get the right position and opened her up with elbow after elbow. It were brilliant, it really were. So, uh, yeah, really, really good fight. Uh, we move on from that to uh, Smiling Sam Alvey, who is one of my favourite fighters, <laughs> against uh, Eric Spicely, who is making his USA debut. And for those of you familiar with the name Eric Spicely, he was on The Ultimate Fighter. Um, the, he was on the season. He lost his semi fight, I believe it was. Yeah, he lost his semi final fight against Andrew Sanchez, but he makes his debut. And loses by guillotine choke, uh, sort of midway through the first round, same as the Courtney Casey Christine Sanchi fight. And yeah, it was a good one. But what? <laughs> yeah, it was a really good performance from Ali as well. He has been kind of slacking lately, but I'm glad he managed to pick this up. Uh, one thing I thought was interesting was the post fight interview when uh, John Anik came in and talked to Alvi, because when it comes to fight nights, they have John Anik and Kenny Florian or. You know, and Brian Sam sometimes as well. Uh, when it comes to an all-year event, it's Joe and Mike. Excuse me, I felt a bit of a burp coming on. <coughs> there we go. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> John Anik talked to Alvi, and Alvi said, like... <laughs> Alvi said that Handsome was going to be a Bisping in that rematch, but that is happening. I'm looking forward to it. I'm worried for Bisping. But, yeah... <laughs> Ali said that Henson's going to beat Bisping, then Henson's going to go on to become the best middleweight champion of all time, then Sam Alvey's going to fight Henson and take the vote from him. You know what? As talented as, Sal as Alvey is, I don't blame him for thinking that way, but I just thought it was a really hilarious thing, to be honest. Like, him calling that out. It's why the fact he's such a happy guy, he did play a bit of a villain at this point. So, it was, it was, uh, it was cool to see. Uh, I don't think that'll ever happen, though. I am... I do want Bisping to win. I, but um, as always with my favorite fighter and fav and fighters I like in general in the UFC, I'm always prepared for the possibility that they're gonna lose. So, 
God, I'm so nervous. Especially for those of you who have seen the first Bisping and Henson fight and remember how poorly that went for Bisping. Eh. Anyway, we're going to move on. Uh, yeah. Next up, we have a really good uh, veteran, uh, Lauren Murphy, against a newcomer named Caitlin Chukagian, making her debut. Despite weird surname, she's got a really good stand-up style. Uh, she won by decision. It was a lot closer, I think. Uh, I definitely think her stand-up was probably her best game. She was showing a lot of accuracy, especially late as the fight went on. But Lauren Murphy was definitely at best with her wrestling. She did land a, f a fair few takedowns, and I thought she won the fight, honestly. But Chikagian managed to take it, and it, it was a decent way to cap off the prelim fights. Like, yeah, it, it was good. That's all I'm going to say. It was good. So uh, we move on from that to the main card. It was over the flyweight fight between Louis Smolka, the last samurai, one of the coolest nicknames in the UFC at the moment, against Ben Ten Gwyn. Or however you're supposed to pronounce his surname. I can never get that right. The last time I talked about him, I couldn't get it right. I can't get it right now. Anyway, Smolka won by a second round TKO, and what a fight this was. It, it was really good. Uh, I mean, it was pretty even in terms of striking, but Smolka did manage to get a better, better hand to the clinch game, and the entire first round was just... It was probably the most exciting ground game I've ever seen in a round in the UFC. They were both rolling over, they were both dominating with Grand Pen, they were both trying to get new submissions on. Second round, it did slightly change. It was more or less the same, kind of, but uh, Smolka was trying a lot more um, submission attempts, you know, despite Ben having a damn good rear naked choke attempt, which is his bread and butter. He's the master of the rear naked choke. And uh, Smolka managed, managed to eventually get a really good net position, managed to push himself up, landed punches and elbows and everything, and the referee called the fight in the second round. So it was a really good win for Smolka and just a really, really good fight. I liked how it went. Next up was a bit of a surprise as we have Keita Nakamura against Kyle Noak. Now, at the very, very start of the fight, Kyle Noak landed a double jab that stunned Nakamura and he had him on the ropes, or, well, so to speak, there aren't ropes in the octagon. He had him against the fence. There we go. <laughs> Probably the entirety of the first round, pretty much. Couldn't finish, did try. And then it got to the point where Kato started fighting back. He stunned Noak with some really good shots. Eventually managed to find his back, and sunk in a rear naked choke, and at the very last second... <coughs> pardon me, at the very last second of round two, Noak tapped. I wish he could have held out for a bit longer because this is actually a really good fight going in. I definitely had the first round going for Noak and second round going for Nakamura. But you know what? It was a really good fight. I like seeing Noak fight anyway. He's always exciting. He's one of my favorites. Uh, Nakamura, I'll be keeping my eye on because it's the first time I've seen him. So uh, yeah, it, it was it was uh, it was a good one. Next up, we have Daniel Emilianchuk. I'm I'm probably butchering that name. Emilianchuk. Hang on. A male and joke. Okay, I was trying to remember it. Against uh, Alexei Olenek. And uh, a male and joke won by uh, decision, majority decision. It was a really good fight. Like, they were standing up uh, quite a lot and just trying to punch the crap out of each other. Then, like, Daniel got some really good takedowns. So I landed the great grandpa. And there was a moment where he fucking busted Alexei open with a really good elbow. It was a good fight. Uh,. Not fight of the night, however, we're going to get to that, but this is another good one. It was nice to see Alexei Olenek return. This is the first time I've actually seen either of them in, so... Yeah, you wouldn't think the heavyweight fights would be so exciting, but, um... Sometimes you can get proven wrong. Next up, we have kind of another upset, as uh, Tim Bosch uh, beat Josh Saman by TKO in the second round. The first round did not go so well for Saman, which is kind of a surprise considering how good he actually is. And, like, Bosch just completely outclassed him. Then it came to the second round and Bosch got a really good takedown. Just grand bounded his way to a really good victory. In fact, no, I think it was more of a standing thing. Like, he, he knocked Saman on his ass at some point and just did tons of damage when Saman was grounded and... It was another good showing from Tim Bosch. It proves that, like, you don't need... Well, he does have a lot of skill. I'm not going to take that away from him. But he's all, he's never been known for his skill. He's always been known for just being a tough son of a bitch, which is pretty much what he is. You can't take that away from him either. He's one of the hardest dudes to take down in the UFC. 
and by takedown I don't just mean wrestling, I mean like fighting in general. So yeah, I like the best we can fight him in if anything. That's the fight I've always wanted to see. So uh we move on from that to the comment event, which is definitely fight of the night. Tony Ferguson against Hang on. I remembered his surname was Venato. I forgot his first name was Lando. I was going for Leandro for some reason. Anyway, this was definitely fight of the night. They rocked each other like five times evenly in the first round. They both always went down at a lot of times, and uh, it was a damn, damn good fight. It really was fight of the night. Definitely deserved it. For the first round, they were just knocking each other down a lot. It was fantastic. It really was. It was a, it was an, it was a very exciting round. And second one, like, it was more of the same, but eventually Tony Ferguson managed to get a really good dash choke sunk in, and, like, as soon as he got it, I knew that was it. And not only did he beat Lando as a UFC debutante, but he put an end to Lando's undefeated streak of eight. Now he's eight and one, so... Really, really good showing from Ferguson. I'm quite proud of him. I've always enjoyed watching him fight. I want to see more of Vanata, so... Yeah, he definitely impressed me for his debut, despite the fact they lost. And now we move on to the main event of the evening, Michael McDonald, no, not the singer, <laughs> against John Lineker. Why do I keep laughing at my own jokes? Against John Lineker, who sounds like a footballer, but is Brazilian. So he could be a footballer. We don't know. Anyway, Lineker won by first round knockout, and holy crap, he completely decimated McDonald. I mean, I like watching McDonald fight. He's good at what he does, no doubt. And he learned, and he learned some really good uh, counter shots after being rocked up for that first time. But that didn't stop how good Lineker is. I mean, Lineker does not just go for the head. He's really, really good at attacking the body. And when he switches up like that, and you start trying to predict where he's going to hit you on the body, as soon as you start making that mistake, Lineker will swing for your head and take it off. And that is pretty much why he did to McDonald. Uh, it was it was a really good showing from Lincoln. I enjoy watching him fight. I've always enjoyed watching McDonald fight as well. So uh, yeah, it was uh, yeah it was a really really good main event. Uh, Lineker picked up the well deserved performance of the night, as did Louis Smolka for his uh, win over um, the guy he fought, Ben Gwynn. That was Ben Ten. It's easy to call him Ben Ten, okay? And that is his nickname. That is not something I'm making up. Anyway, really really good card. Really really good event. Again, I'm sorry that this was... Pardon me. It has been a burp-riddled episode. Ugh. I'm sorry that I was a bit late to the recording of it, and Rob was a 30 minutes, so I better start rambling now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I, I certainly enjoy talking about it. I don't know why. And I'll see you in the next one, whenever that is. So, uh, take care.